Dear students, I am Bharat Kashyap, lecturer Biology, LGSSS, Majhwa District, Mandi. Today I am going to teach you 9th chapter of Biology, Biomolecules. And today's topics are Proteins and Nucleic Acids. Now let us study proteins. Let us have some introduction of proteins. These are the most important and abundant organic biomolecules. They are polypeptide chains of amino acids linked by peptide bonds. Proteins are polymers of 20 types of amino acids. These are considered as heteropolymers. On basis of their utility, amino acids are of two types. Essential amino acids. These are essential for our health, so are needed to be supplied through our diet. For example, leucine, isoleucin, etc. Then non-essential amino acids. These amino acids can be synthesized in our body, for example, proline and serine. Now, human adults require an additional essential amino acid named threonine, while children need two more, arginine and histidine. These are called semi-essential amino acids. Now let us discuss structure of proteins. Proteins are heteropolymers containing strings of amino acids. Protein structure has four levels that is primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary depending upon complexity of protein. Now primary structure of protein. The sequence of amino acids that is the positional information of amino acid. In other words, which amino acid is at position first, second and so on in a protein is called the primary structure. If a protein is imagined as a line, the left end represented by first amino acid is called N-terminal amino acid and the right end represented by the last amino acid named C-terminal amino acid. This can be understood with this diagram here. This is the N-terminal amino acid and toward this side is the C-terminal amino acid. So these are different amino acids which are joined by peptide linkage to form a protein. Now next is secondary structure of proteins. Look at diagrams here. The thread of primary protein is folded to form alpha helix. It is stabilized by hydrogen bonds between oxygen of carboxyl group of first amino acid residue and amino group of next fourth amino acid residue for example keratin this is the alpha helix here and this is the hydrogen bond formed between carboxyl and amino group first and fourth now in beta pleated secondary structure Two or more polypeptide chains get connected by hydrogen bonds, for example, silk fiber. In proteins, only right handed helices are observed. This is the right handed helix here. And in beta pleated sheet, you can clearly see more than one polypeptide chain and hydrogen bond join these chains. So, a pleated sheet is formed. 
now tertiary structure of protein the long protein chain folded upon itself like a hollow woolen ball to form a tertiary structure tertiary structure is stabilized by several type of bonds like hydrogen bonds ionic bonds van der waals interactions covalent bonds and hydrophobic bonds it gives information about a three dimensional conformation of the protein for example myoglobin tertiary structure is helpful for many biological activities of proteins so in the picture this is the secondary structure and this is further folded structure of tertiary protein now quaternary structure of proteins certain proteins are an assembly of more than one polypeptide or subunits in these proteins individual polypeptides or subunits are folded and arranged with respect to one another to form linear string of spheres spheres arranged one upon each other in the form of a cube or a plate hemoglobin consists of four subunits two of these are identical to each other hence two subunits of alpha type and two subunits are of beta type together constitute the hemoglobin so hemoglobin is a quaternary protein you can see here in diagram these are different levels of protein organizations primary structure then secondary protein structure then tertiary and most complex one is quaternary protein structure and now nucleic acids the other type of macromolecule found as a part of acid insoluble fraction of any living tissue is the nucleic acids these are polymeric compounds of nucleotides that is polynucleotides a nucleic acid which contains deoxyribose sugar is called deoxyribonucleic acid while that which contains ribose sugar is called ribonucleic acid now deoxyribose nucleic acid or dna dna is genetic material found in nucleus of all living cells except some viruses in eukaryotic organisms linear dna is found in nucleus in the mitochondria and chloroplasts whereas in prokaryotes dna is circular in structure and is found in the cytoplasm now structure of dna it is best explained by watson and crick model according to this model dna exists as a double helix the two strands of polynucleotides are anti parallel that is run in opposite directions one in 5 dash 3 dash direction and other in 3 dash to 5 dash direction the backbone of dna is formed by sugar phosphate sugar chain the nitrogen bases are projected perpendicular to this and face inside adenine and guanine of one strand pairs with thymine and cytosine on the other strand such that there are two hydrogen bonds between adenine and thymine while hydrogen bonds are three in case of guanine and cytosine each strand appears like a helical staircase each step of ascent is represented by a base pair at each step of ascent the strand turns 36 degrees one full turn of helical strand has 
10 steps or 10 base pairs. The length of double chain in full one turn is 34 angstrom so that a rise of one step or base pair is 3.4 angstrom. Thus, one turn of DNA consists of 10 nucleotides or 10 base pairs. This type of DNA is called BDNA. Now, let us understand secondary structure of DNA with the help of diagram. These are two strands of polynucleotides and are anti-parallel that is run in opposite directions. Now, this is showing sugar, phosphate, sugar, backbone of DNA. The nitrogen bases are perpendicular to this backbone and faces inside. And now, each strand appear like a helical staircase. This is showing staircase. And each step in staircase represented by a pair of bases. At each step, the strand turns 36 degrees, 36 degrees angle from the central axis. One full turn of helical strand involve this involve 10 steps or 10 base pairs. The rise per base pair is 3.4 angstrom. So this is the structure of DNA. With this we come to close of today's lecture. I do hope you must have understood it properly. Thanks for watching.